And the Russian capital has expressed both hurt and outrage after being targeted with a slew of new sanctions at the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe. Not only has the country had its voting rights stripped until next year, but its representative functions have also been suspended. It means Russia won't be able to take part in election observer missions or have its delegates in the council's governing bodies. RT's Peter Oliver is in Strasbourg for us. He told us of Moscow's indignation. We've seen a visibly upset, a terse and quite tense um, situation here. Uh, and the Russian delegation quite clearly very upset with what they see as an unjust uh, ruling to impose sanctions upon them. Now, uh, during a press conference that followed the vote on that resolution, we heard um, strong words from the, the head of the Russian delegation in which he asked the question of just who are the people that voted for uh, this resolution uh, to judge Russia considering what they have in their own history. Those states that have been breaking international law on a regular basis during the past 15 years by bombing Belgrade, by bombing Libya, by occupying Iraq, have no moral right to take any decisions concerning the Russian delegation. Well, following the press conference, the Russian delegation left the building just behind me. Um, they had originally boycotted uh, the session that had took place in the morning. Um, what we did see, as I say, was a, a very um, unhappy uh, press conference that took place that was interrupted numerous times. Um, there was no translation from Russian to any other language could, provided for journalists. Now, this prompted around English half of the journalists in the room to, to leave um, as they couldn't understand what was, what was being said. Uh, but we can have a look at just what was going on uh, in that press conference right now. Sorry to stop you, Mr. This is a press conference, not a political statement. Who is saying this? Me, here. over here. Where? Here. Uh, if you are uh, not happy with my statement, you can, you can make it as well It has nothing to do with your statement. If you are not happy with my statement, you can as well leave. So where does this all leave us? Russia have now had their voting rights within the, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe suspended until the end of this year. They also uh, won't be allowed to be taking part in... Um in uh, international observation uh, missions. Uh, it doesn't go as far, the resolution that was voted on doesn't go as far as the one that had been originally uh, proposed by the United Kingdom that would have seen Russia kicked out of the, the assembly. But uh, the vote today, it has upset some people, um, but it also follows a vote that took place on Wednesday in which um, a resolution on Ukraine was passed. And we can now listen to my report about the wording of that resolution. Despite the strongly worded rhetoric used in the resolution put forward by the Council of Europe, Russia maintains that some of which is being put across as fact is in reality far from the truth. The PACE Commission has decided to support a totally appalling version of the resolution on Ukraine that contains unconcealed fantasies concerning the possible Russian military invasion of Ukraine and a complete aversion of our argument on the situation in Ukraine and the takeover of power by armed radicals. But let's see what the resolution actually states. The unprecedented escalation of violence was largely the result of the increasingly hard-handed approach of the authorities. But when you look at the facts, a number of videos have emerged showing police retreating instead of cracking down on rioters, as well as themselves falling victim to harsh attacks. The Assembly strongly condemns the use of snipers and live ammunition against protesters by the Ukrainian authorities at that time. But at the same time, the resolution seems to contradict itself. It is important that these investigations are impartial and free from political motivation or any desire for retribution. The investigation group should include representatives from Russia and other countries, and it should be monitored by the international community. Can a current governmental commission be trusted if there's a possibility that they were involved in the massacre and ordered the snipers to fire at both sides? No, it can't be trusted. All this without any mention of the use of weapons by those supporting the overthrow of Yanukovych's government. There was no ultra-right-wing takeover of the central government in Kiev. 
Despite even the casual observer in central Kiev struggling to avoid the fighters of the group right sector, while five members of the current cabinet in office are from a renowned right-wing party. Uh, Peter Oliver there. Now let's have a look at what PACE actually is. Now, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe includes 47 members of the national European parliaments. Its uh, powers are limited. It can only investigate, give recommendations and advise on key issues that affect the region. So its resolutions don't actually have to be followed. PACE focuses its discussions on uh, human rights and the protection of minority groups.